This is the Weather Extreme video for Friday morning, the 17th. I'm James Spann. Got a big old wet weather system to deal with tomorrow as we start the weekend. So let's get in there and see if we can answer all of your questions. We'll start with uh, the Skycam images around the network this morning. Things are pretty quiet. First off, the view coming from Inverness. The Wingate Inn overlooking US 280. Got a few brave souls out there at 5 o'clock. That's the uh, Tuscaloosa Sky Can from high atop the Tuscaloosa County Courthouse. And we'll cross the state line and look at downtown Columbus, Mississippi at 5 o'clock. Got a whopper of an upper low south of Phoenix that will be traversing to the east, producing a lot of issues for the uh, eastern part of the nation this weekend. Peak of temperatures around the nation this morning, pretty mild near the Gulf Coast, cold to the north. And by golly, we could see some snow maybe uh, north of here. I say north of here. We're talking northern Tennessee and Kentucky, as you'll see. This weekend. Issues this morning. uh, Got flash flood watches up now for parts of southeastern Texas, including Houston. Also parts of Louisiana. It's uh, coastal Mississippi. As uh, our friends on the Gulf Coast will be soaked. Check the convective outlooks. This is the day one outlook for today and tonight. Got a risk of severe weather over the lower Rio Grande. Down around there, McAllen, Harlingen, Texas, Brownsville. Tomorrow, standard slight risk of severe weather. For about the southern half of Alabama uh, into some of the adjacent states, the Florida panhandle. And within that, the higher probabilities, 30 percent south of Montgomery. Uh, And that is certainly where the better chance of severe weather will be in that red zone right there. New Orleans, Gulfport, Mobile, Gulf Shores, the southern Alabama cities like Monroeville, Greenville, Troy, uh, Eufaula, Dothan, Geneva, and then down in the panhandle of Florida. Fort Walton Beach, Pensacola, Destin, and Panama City. And again, we'll take a look at the specifics in a moment. And yeah, we're going to get soaked. That's the rain for the next five days, valid through Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. Looks like that thing is suggesting three and a half inches of rain around Mobile Bay. Wow. And amounts up this way of nearly two inches. And in terms of the chance of exceeding uh, flash flood guidance, there's a slight risk down across the southern part of the state. I don't think we have any major flooding issues up this way, but you, you never know. We'll watch things as they unfold. We'll check the upper part of this storm. This is the GFS, the 06E run, valid at noon today. Uh, about 18,000 feet off the ground. There's the trough to the west, and then tomorrow at midday, the trough progresses east over Texas. We'll look at the surface chart. This is uh, midday tomorrow. This is noon, a 1,008 millibar low over the far northwestern gulf. Saturday night at midnight, that surface low is near Demopolis. And remember, severe weather will be south and east of that low track. And that's why it looks like South Alabama will certainly have the main severe weather risk. And then by Sunday, the surface low is near Greenville, South Carolina. And ooh, look at the snow potential up there over Kentucky and maybe parts of Tennessee. All right, timing. Everybody's asking questions about timing. I'll just show you some maps. They tell the story. This is 6 a.m. tomorrow. There could be some patchy light rain, but I think, you know, part of the morning here will be dry. The big stuff is still way to the west. This is noon tomorrow. And all of a sudden, we go pretty wet with heavier rain moving in here. This is the RPM, and it wants to move this uh, convective complex through South Alabama quickly. And 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, the heavy rain is already beginning to end over West Alabama but again, the, the greater chance of any severe weather with this stuff would be down there in that stuff near the Gulf Coast. And then Sunday morning at 6 o'clock, uh, the bulk of the rain is gone. Still some lingering rain over northeast Alabama. And look at the snow up there over parts of Tennessee. And then Sunday at noon, everybody's dry down here. Snow to the north of us. In fact, uh, speaking of the snow, let's look at the uh, snow accumulation coming off the RPM. Maybe a little bit of light snow from Nashville. But the better snows are going to be up in the mountains of, like, West Virginia, places like that. All right, uh, severe weather parameters. Uh, This is the instability at 6 a.m. Sunday coming off the NAM. And it's got a little bit of instability. In fact, uh, it's got a – it wants to bring the uh, Cape up to uh, over 750 joules over parts of east-central Alabama early Sunday morning. And it doesn't really jive up with the RPM. The RPM has the convective mass gone by then. Uh, but most models are keeping the better instabilities over South Alabama. But we have to note that. And again, you know, we're kind of on the northern fringe of all of this, so we'll be watching developments carefully. And this is the Energy Helicity Index uh, Sunday morning at 6 o'clock with uh, uh, 1.5 over East Alabama, which is fairly respectable. So 
clearly the better chance of severe weather is over the southern half of the state, but we're just on the northern flank of all that, so we'll watch developments carefully. When it comes to thunderstorms, always expect the unexpected. All right, next week on Monday, we're dry, uh, but still pretty pleasant. I mean, there's no really cold air involved with this. Sunday, we drop back a little bit into the 50s, but uh, the high Monday goes back into the low 60s. There's Tuesday, we're dry. Tuesday night at midnight, a batch of storms coming in here on the GFS, and then by Wednesday, it's gone. So this run is showing a quick-hitting batch of storms Tuesday night. We dry out Wednesday, Thursday is dry, and Friday is dry. But we have seen other runs that want to slow all that down. So confidence in a specific solution next week, not all that good. We'll check the end of the forecast March 3rd. Tornado season begins. Holy moly. That is a classic severe weather look there. If by chance this is right, 992 millibar low over Kansas. But that's purely out there in the land of voodoo. It is all speculation. We're just peeking. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. Next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.